And he said that if you go to Duke, uh, it will take you longer than anywhere else, but you'll get to be an associate professor faster than anywhere else. And this is at a time when there was no integrated pathway for plastics, correct? So if you wanted to do plastics, you did general and then a plastics fellowship. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. And I, you know, I was leaning to plastics. I wasn't totally sure, but that, but yes. Yes. Mm. Um, and then um, so that was interesting. And so I thought, well, I should go do a rotation at Duke to sort of see what it's like. Because the Duke had a reputation then, which was deserved to some degree, about being really challenging. And I thought, you know, before I just jump into doing that, I think I should spend a month down there and see what's about it. Mm-hmm. Um, I also did a rotation at Harvard um, at Mass General. There were some people out there that seemed to be good to work with, and that, you know, again, this family friend was a connection. Um, and, yes, yeah, so I, I went up to Harvard for a month, and um, it didn't connect for me for various reasons, um, which I can go into if you want, but it's not tied to me here. And then, but I went to Duke for a month and I did cardiac because I hadn't done cardiac as a student. And I thought, well, this would be good exposure. And, um, you know, I'll be at Duke to sort of see what that's like too. Mm-hmm. And um, it was busy. And I, and I just decided to go ahead and take call every other night with the residents because that's what they're doing anyway. And mm-hmm. what I was doing when I got there, I figured I would see what that's like. Um, and so I did. And, um, it was it was really busy. Um, I didn't really know what really busy is as a student compared to being a resident. But it was the busy to me then. And um, and I my I remember talking to my mother on the phone, you know, part way through that, maybe a couple weeks in or something. Um, she said, "How are you liking?" It? And I said, "I'm having a great time, but there's no way I would ever come here <laughs> um, because it was you know like too much." Um, but um, that's not true, it turns out. That's not what happened. Um, I had a good experience, and I worked with, um, like, Randy Chitwood was mm-hmm. the super chief on the cardiac service. Mm-hmm. And Randy, Randy was great. Um, no, it's not true. Wait a minute. Yes, yeah, Randy. Gosh. Randy was either chief or super chief. Oh, shoot. Austin, a last name Austin was, was also was either chief or super chief. You may be able to figure out the years, but sure. Um, anyway, um, but I, but they were great. And Ross Underlighter was there. Loved Ross. And um, remember Ross telling me about a. Um, I had like a day free sometime, and he suggested I go to the Eno River and just kind of hang out there, Eno mm-hmm. River Park, which I loved and spent a lot of time there in the future after that. But that was great. And 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 Ross said. Also about Durham, I can't think of him. He said Durham's a great place to live, but you wouldn't want to visit there. And was, yeah. <laughs> that was a nice place to visit. And it was a nice place to visit then too, but nobody ever visited Durham really. Yeah. You visit Capitol Hill. They, they land in Durham at the airport, going somewhere else because it was a hub for a while. But mm-hmm. uh, I never saw people that I knew coming through town. So that was sort of prophetic. But anyway, that's not beside the point. But I learned a lot and. Uh, and liked it, and you know, worked with Andy Wexler a fair amount. But he was very active then at Duke, liked him. And anyway, lots of good folks. And then um, when I went on and you know did the rest of my fourth year, and then interviewed, it was very interesting because I you know I interviewed a bunch of well not not many places compared to what a lot of people do now, but I think nine, mm-hmm. um, you know, including the West Coast and East Coast programs and. Um, Every place I went, without exception, pointed me to Duke. Really? So, yeah. So, example, I went – well, first, first of all, that I tended to meet people who were trained at Duke. Sure. Because a lot of people that are trained at Duke were in prominent positions at good places. Right. Um, and one of them was at UCLA. Oh, and I'm going to – Forget his name. It starts with an R. We could probably figure it out. And I could probably look at this and figure it out. But anyway, but somebody else, UCLA, I was asking about research. And he said that they did really good research. He said, you know, not as good as Duke, of course. Yeah. But, you know, it was that kind of thing that yeah. just kept coming up, right? Um, and so it made me think more about going back to Duke. And I interviewed at Duke, of course, again. Oh, I can tell you a funny story, but remind me. I'll tell you later. But um, mm-hmm. 
that my flight to Durham. But um, but anyway, yeah. So that it seemed like that was the thing to do. So when Duke I Duke obviously had a had a fair representation in Charlottesville with Dr. Jones, Dr. Shermer, Dr. Hag, right, Dr. Shag. Yes. Did, did did that provide much of an influence, or are you just yeah. for whatever reason ended up not working with those guys very much? Uh, yeah, no, I, I worked with John Hanks as a I mean, you know, in as a student, I was you know worked with him. I, right. I was yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> but um, yeah, it was funny because John, pretty much maybe off by you know a bit of the time, but roughly, John and Sandy and Bruce and and um, Scott Jones all came roughly at the same time, mm-hmm. and at the uh, at, basically after I'd been there for two years of medical school, so they're there in my third and fourth years. Got it. And, and of course, you know, seemed to me like they've been there forever, right? Of course, because you don't know, right? <laughs> right. Like, well, this is the way it is. And um, and I remember thinking, still, you know, think about John Hanks rounding with John Hanks, and these back then we had these rooms that had the reward rooms, you know, had four patients, mm-hmm. patients in a room, and yeah. standing inside the door. I remember, you know, and John talking, and I just thought this guy knows so much stuff, and he's so experienced. He was, of course, but he was he's right out of residency. Yeah. <laughs> and, but it was great. Um, oh, sorry, that's right. Bruce came later. Sorry, Bruce was a resident at Duke when I was there. Um, mm-hmm. But not not much later. But, yeah, Sandy and John and, and um, Scott came at the same time. And Bruce came years later. Um, but, uh, yeah, so I interacted with Sandy and John. Sandy got in his accident um, during my fourth year, I think. I think the beginning of my fourth year. Um mm-hmm. Yeah, and I, I like Scott Jones a lot. Um, and we talked about Duke and stuff too. So anyway, and he you know, he was very supportive of me being in Duke. Um I remember like well, yeah, anyway, later is another story. But anyhow, so I um yeah, I just I kept pointing to Duke and so I ranked Duke first, um, I ranked Virginia second. Um, and I felt like I'd probably get to stay there if I wanted to, if you know, if I didn't get into Duke. Um, mm-hmm. And I think I ranked UCSF and Seattle, yeah, third and fourth. I forget which order. Um, yeah, that's what I did. And actually, you probably don't want to, you don't need to hear this, but I, it was a good piece of advice I thought that I got from one of the um, surgery residents here, um, who was a chief when I was a medical student and applying to residency. Um, gosh, I'm gonna have to. I can't remember his name too, and I may not pull it out. But he was kind of a mensch, you know, and just like he was very impressive to us students and very strong. Um, and I remember st- sitting there um, between there was like during a case, maybe there was some other procedure going on. And we had to wait for something else to finish up, and so mm-hmm. I was with him for a few minutes, and um, and I didn't think he, you know, knew who I was or cared who I was. And he may not have, right? But he just started talking. But anyway, he, he was very nice and gave me advice about um, residency. And he, um, one thing he said was that you don't want to apply. Well, i had done well in school. So his, his mm-hmm. point was, if you've, got, if you've done well, you shouldn't settle for places you don't want to be. So don't rank places you don't want to be. Yeah. Um, so if you don't, you know, if you've done well then, and you don't match, then you'll get somewhere in the scramble. And It'll be fine, and it's better than ending up somewhere you don't want to be. That's why I only ranked four. Hmm. And then um, he also said, um, during your internship, you're going to be, you know, you're going to be exhausted. You're going to really question what you, you know, what you're doing. You're going to seriously contemplate suicide. And the key, he seriously said this, and it was really good because, you know, and he, he said. The key is just don't make any big decisions that year. You know, you've made the decision <laughs> to do it rationally, and when you're when you're rested and when you're thoughtful, I forget his exact words, but that was the general point. And um, so, don't make any big decisions. You know, don't have to leave. Don't decide for yourself, whatever. Um, yeah. In that year, just don't. And it was helpful because there were times when I was, you know, really stressed out, and I, you know, all of us were. Um, yeah. And I could just, I could just let this rational advice helped me go. Um, so that was good. And um, yeah, so I, was ha- so I ended up yeah, matching at Duke. Um, so before we start intern year, you said you had a story about your flight when you were interviewing there? Yeah, yeah. 